quest. And our final ban of the first half will be what? Probably it Olaf. looks like. We'll be like, yes. Olaf banned away. All right. Yeah, it feels like Olaf Udyr are becoming fairly mandatory red side bans. Unless the team is actually willing to do a trade, then you can leave, try to leave both open uh, and maybe force the blue side into banning one of them away themselves. So those are kind of the options there. Lilia being grabbed up here early for Jose Diota. He has been strong on it. But CLG will secure Rel. This has been a really good champion for Smoothie. You know, even through a lot of their losses, he had had good individual performances in a lot of the team fights, finding combos, finding engages on that Rel to really make things happen for the squad. So gonna be pretty happy about that. But Diamond with the snap response here of the Alistar has the ability to disengage, has the ability to go in. And it's going to be something that's pretty important to pair with that Lilia because I do feel like when yeah. you are drafting the Lilia, you have to have those go buttons to be able to follow up on sleeps or to be able to set up for them. All right, Rel, Tristana, Lucian versus wow. Lilia, Alistar, and what is hovered as a Kaisa would not be surprised at all to see this locked in. It remains incredibly strong in pretty much every situation. So Kaisa versus Tristana, S tier 80 carries going up against one another. We're expecting. Well, it could be Tristana or Lucian in either position, I guess. You do have the flex power on both of those since they are both marksmen that could go either solo lane or into that bottom lane position. But honestly, Azale, the first half of this draft feels like it went by very quickly. Seems like both rosters know what they want and just immediately snap it in. They did, yeah. It went, went by really, really quickly. And of course, it is possible Lucian goes bot, but Lucian almost never goes bot, it feels like, over the last couple of years even in pro play. So I'm expecting that is just straight up blind Lucian mid. Of course, there is the possibility of the flex, but it feels fair. I always cool. have to say it, though, because yep, if I don't say it, I get Keck W. Skarner main mm -hmm. for the next five <laughs> minutes. Get that and I don't want that. Twitter. Yeah, you I got to deal with that, that guy pick. on Twitter with two followers and no profile picture. So I'm just I'm covering all my angles and say, OK, I'm covering all the Artifacted. angles. But the, the and right now Lucian does feel a bit risky. You've got to say, right? Like Lucian is generally only used in pro play as, as a counter pick for mid lane. So I'm going to be interested to see if FlyQuest has an answer to it. Victor is actually a pretty solid matchup into it. Uh, we did see some, some pretty solid laning in this matchup from the side of the Victor. You can use your ultimate to actually cancel the culling and just kind of use that to trade, use your superior wave clear to shove in. So I wouldn't be surprised to see if CLG wants to ban out some more mid laners here. Uh, and I'm, I really want to just track Ken Palafox actually punish what is admittedly a pretty cocky pick. So we've got four out of five jungle bands on the side of FlyQuest. Granted, Gragas is a flex, so he could be a different role as well. But with Nidalee and Gragas banned away, that means Aatrox and Victor are the bands on the side of CLG. Mm -hmm. And it's up to FlyQuest now to show us one of those two solo laners. Irelia is a champion that could flex to either role. Hovering over the Yone now. We might see that one locked in. Will it be true? FlyQuest? Okay, we got the Yone picked up here. Some flashy moves incoming. Okay, so Yone going to be the answer into this Lucian. This is not a lane counter. This is actually very Lucian favored as far as the early laning does go. That being said, if the Yone can withstand the laning phase, not fall too far behind, you can start to take over. You can dominate once you get post six, once you can start threatening those all ins. Shen, I think would actually be great here. Uh, it's a fairly good matchup into the Scion. Honestly, it just becomes down to like who has the push and it's probably going to be the Scion. But Shen pairs incredibly well, both with the Alistar and the Yone, allowing you to have that dive buddy to be able to go in aggressively. You can throw Yone in at multiple squishy members here. You know, the Morgana and both of those marksmen. Is this, this is actually a Jungle Morgana. Jungle Morgana, yeah. Ooh. I was waiting when you were going to notice it, buddy. I was like, hold on a second. For a second I was thinking that they were going to flex That's the jungler. Around, so I wasn't, I wasn't getting too hyped until I actually saw what they landed on. Yeah, man, that's Morgana wow. jungle. This is pretty interesting here. Uh, I honestly can't remember the last time I, I fought against the Jungle Morgana. When they first got changed, there was those changes uh, that your W did a lot more damage and got like the refund on cooldown to mm -hmm. monsters. And they did it with like Zyra, Morgana, and maybe I want to say a Grand or something like that. There was like three that they were kind of experimenting with working in the jungle. Morgana, I remember playing it at the time. Now, admittedly, this was like when the first changes first came through, so probably a year or two ago, had a yeah. pretty good clear. And you could actually do the AoE camps fairly, uh, fairly healthy just with a W max. So that will be interesting. Your ganks are pretty pitiful. You're playing it <laughs> much more like, you know, just an extra support that has more yeah. gold. I mean, sure, you can walk in and throw a binding out, but come on, a max range binding, you got to be AFK to get hit by that for the most part. So uh, we'll see what he can get done. 
it, it, it's very interesting. And it's just so all in on double marksmen, right? Because now you have essentially the Morgana, who is going to be buffing up and supporting these double marksmen, as well as the Scion and the Rel, who are there for the engage, right? You have Black Shield yep. on the marksmen, allow them to play aggressively, but it means that you're mostly physical damage heavy. Uh, I'm not sure what kind of build we're going to see. Like, it, it could be, you know, Moonstone Morgana and go full on just like all the way support. Uh, and just utilizing the Black Shield. It also could be just more of an aggressive build, like Leandri, Zonia's, and try to play it um, more alongside that engage. So I am going to be honest, I don't really know what we're going to see, um, but I'm yeah. excited to, to find out. That's half the fun, right? This is a pick that you would randomly see from some niche players that really, really just love Morgana and want to play it in other positions in solo queue or whatever. But in terms of a competitive environment, I did not wake up today and expect myself to be casting Jungle Morgana on the LCS, but here we are. So we'll see how well this works out. And you're right talking about the ganks. You know, you have to be able to hit the bindings for the ganks to mean much of anything, but it's so incredibly effective. I will tell you this, Azale. And you're not going to believe this, but my only knowledge about Jungle Morgana comes from the lens of the Skarner matchup. And for the Skarner matchup, it's miserable. Because <laughs> if she ever counter ganks you, you just get binded up, she black shields whoever you want to try to ulti, and then the gank fizzles. Nothing happens. You just walk away. Morgana is so good, if she's able to read when her opponent is going to gank and show up for the counter gank, you can protect your ally, throw down some spooky dirt, land a binding, and everything feels fantastic. So I will be watching to see how well Broxa is able to track his opponent on this pick. Yeah, I mean, if you can get vision of the jungler especially and know, then that can work out well. But it's always tough when you're in the position of always having to respond to the gank instead of being able to be proactive. Because if you waste too much time waiting around in the bush, hoping your opponent's going to show up, well, you're going to be falling behind as far as farm goes. If you guys are wondering uh, why we have this delay, why it has taken so long to get into game, why we did an extra long intro, uh, there were some mic issues that players were having that they were trying to figure out. So, of course, that means that champ select got pushed back. That means that our intro got longer. Um, but that has been fixed up. We will hopefully be quickly into game. We, of course, have to build some delay for competitive integrity so people can't just right. go on over to twitch.tv and see who's ganking who. <laughs> <laughs> that would be a little bit unfortunate if that was the case of things. But, hey, we're going to play one of my favorite games in the meantime since we do have a little bit of time to burn. All right, Azale. Who is getting first blooded and who gets the kill? Hmm. That's tough, man. Uh, if you I'm get this say, right, if you get I'm both parts Pal of this right, Palafox gets first blooded by Poe Belter. Okay, Palafox gets first blooded by Poe Belter. You didn't let yeah. me make my guarantee, but my guarantee is no bamboozle. Welcome if you get this right, both parts, half credit's not worth anything. Both parts are correct. As soon as we get the vaccine and LA opens back up, I will take you out to a nice steak dinner and pay for everything. Ooh, now I'm actually really invested in this. Yeah, because normally I'm excited. Normally, I tell people that I'll gift their, gift their channel 50 subs if they get it right. Nobody's ever got it right. But oh. you don't stream, so I have to make something else. Okay. So I figure nice, fancy steak dinner will be good enough. Come if on, Poe Belter. you manage to get this right. <laughs> so you're what? I said, come on, Poe Belter. <laughs> All right. So let's see if Poe Belter first bloods Palafox. If both yeah. parts are right, you win the prize. Half exactly. credit is nothing. I mean, I, I think <laughs> it, there, there is a lot of pressure in this lane. You know, I talked about how it's actually a tough lane matchup for Palafox. And Pobelter also went for Ignite, so he's looking to punish this. They're going to look to play aggressive. You know, the fact that he has the Ignite, to me, says that they're going to be pressuring this lane, that they're going to be attacking this lane, because otherwise there's no point in really going for that, as opposed to just taking Teleport and farming it out. So this will be interesting to see how heavily they can pressure this. Raptor start with W just makes sense on Morgana. Uh, I think this is the, the logical way to go. Where he goes from here is where it's going to be interesting. Uh, we'll kind of track what his pathing is going to be. Of course, you do get the spell vamp on the large monsters, as well as every time your W ticks on a large monster, it reduces the cooldown of the follow-up W there. So you do have, you know, very good sustain. You're clear on AoE camps is okay. The slow part really is the large camps. Like, this is going to take him quite a while, and I do expect him to be fairly behind with the pace that Alilia can put out. But that being said, there, there is a lot of value in having Black Shield against Alistar combo, Shen Taunt, the Lilia Sleep. Like, all of these tools that FlyQuest has to really engage can be nullified pretty heavily by the Morgana, but not if you're way behind. Not if you're having a rough game and you just become paper. And Licorice taking control over the top side 1v1 here. Meanwhile, in the mid lane, Palafox is a melee champion against Lucian nice and early. He's forced to concede mm -hmm. the wave. Poe Belter maintains control over that. He will get this one shoved up, and Palafox is forced to last hit underneath the turret. 
Yone has some really, really good matchups, but if he's picked in a situation where you're able to get counter pick against him, or if you just pick him into a situation where you're up against a champion like Lucian, as we've seen FlyQuest do, the Lucian was locked in before the Yone was, that just means that you have to be able to play these difficult lanes if you yep. want to scale into that 1v9 champion later on. And it's one of those things where a, a lot of these marksmen into assassin type matchups, you know, especially range into melee type matchups, can go very heavily in the favor of the marksman early on. But if you believe you can survive it, if you can withstand the onslaught, and you can get to that critical point where you've got some items, you've got some levels, and you're not down that far, you can all in this guy and start to kill him. And if the Yone gets ahead of the Lucian, it becomes pretty unplayable as the Lucian. You, know, you can just get all in pretty much on cooldown. It can start going really aggressive. So that's what Palafox is playing for. It's less about that lane. Roxa going after the Scuttle Crab, leaving the Spooky Dirt to kill it. And that means that he will secure top side crab. You can see the bowling ball, the attempted Double steal crab. from Jose de Oro that does not result in much of anything, just rolls towards mid lane as Poe Belter keeps on farming up, keeps on maintaining control over this. We've checked in on top, we've checked in on mid. Down there in the bottom side, everything is totally even between those farms as well. Palafox going in for some damage onto POB in the mid lane, then snaps right back before the Lucian can trade back against him. Who would have predicted that it's a double crab for Morgana? You know, not a lot of people, <laughs> I, don't, I don't think, here. But they had to push him in bot side. They had mid lane prio. So he rushes up the top, grabs that crab, and then goes down bot lane and is able to take that because of the pressure on the map. And because he also started Raptors, the Raptors have already respawned. Oh! <laughs> First blood for Pooh Belter on Palafox, baby! He takes him down to the 1v1. He does it with style. You're getting a steak dinner, buddy. Uh, winner, winner, steak dinner. <laughs> <laughs> let's go. <laughs> All right, let's watch Hell it one more yeah. time. Uh, Pope Belter going in here, has him low, already has the PTA applied for that you know, additional proc of damage that he already got out. The Q through the minions, flash double tap with the ignite, gets it all, clean play there from Pope Belter, gets him a first blood, and more importantly, wins me a steak dinner. You'll love to see it. That is the first time ever from all the people that I have ever casted with here or on my own streams that got that right. You are a champion, my friend, and Finn is in some trouble. FlyQuest trying to make a play here, but the escape is good enough. He doesn't even have to burn the flash to do it. Easy stuff here for CLG, weathering the storm in the top lane. Doing really well up there. Licorice does have that pressure, but as you say, with that flash down, is gonna have to play a lot more carefully now. Things looking good already here early on for CLG. But of course, anytime you are playing double marksman, uh, it is difficult to play against Shen. Licorice here may get found out. The parry zone becomes so valuable when there's two marksmen. If you can get a well-placed parry zone, you know, either defending your carries or even just diving in the taunt into a parry zone to follow that up, you know, with Palafox and everyone diving in, that is going to be difficult. And Shen can, of course, also stack a tremendous amount of armor. So that's going to make things more difficult here too, which is why I've been kind of waiting for this first base from Broxa. And there it is. He will get Lost Chapter, so I'm expecting it to be Leandri's. It won't be Moonstone, which I think this is the right choice, right? You need some sort of AP threat or it's just gonna be Tabby's Bramble on Alistar yeah. and, and Shen, you're not gonna have any real damage. So at least now there's a bit of an AP threat here to burn through someone who's potentially stacking armor. Broxa continuing to scale up on the jungle Morgana as CLG's gold lead is equivalent to just a little bit more than the first blood value that Poe Belter got on Palafox here in the mid lane. He still keeps his CS lead. He has buddies on either side of him if Palafox tries to do anything sneaky or cheeky. And that just means the POB can keep on shoving up here. They'll rotate down into the bottom side river. Broxa finds Jose Deoto waiting for him here with the crab, but Broxa's got the secure there with the smite. Forces out the flash from the Lilia too. Nicely done, gets that bonus move speed. You can see he was holding his binding to actually land the binding after the ultimate root did come through. As Jensen, or Johnson rather, should be able to retreat here. Uh, so Broxa forcing out the flash, right? If you throw the binding and you miss, then maybe you don't get it. But because he knew he would get that connection uh, with that ultimate, then the binding is guaranteed and Jose Diodo would have been dead. So he had to commit that. But Turtle now moves up here to this top side, just kind of 1v1 against Licorice right now. We're seeing more and more uh, pattern in pro play and, and LCS and everything. You know, the more Tristana gets in, the more you're trying to find opportunities, honestly, just give solo experience over. So CLG gonna be happy to do any of that they can here for Turtle. Oh. Quest just chilling. 
Licorice will do whatever he can to protect this turret. Still plenty of plates remaining on that one. No Drake taken yet. Rift Herald still hasn't spawned onto the map. And you can see Finn defending as much as he can, bringing down the axe onto all these minions, just trying to keep them away from the turret, trying to minimize any damage they're taking down here, recognizing how easy it is for Turtle to push that turret on the top side. So as long as Finn can defend, this swap works out well for CLG. Mm -hmm. Looking good here. Grabbing a turret plate there as well. And again, Smoothie just roaming towards mid lane. They want to attack this Yone. They want to keep him down. They want to utilize the ignite that is available here for Pobelter. Of course, Smoothie will be spotted on the roam by that ward, but he clears it out. He gives coverage here for Povelter to be able to continue push. And they can now move up towards this Rift Herald here. So CLG, I think, playing the map really well. I think the lane assignments are intelligent. You know, Shen doesn't really have much going on in that 1v1 against Rasana. Can't actually pressure for a kill or anything. So bonus gold, bonus experience going over to him. But FlyQuest is here to try to contest. It's a 3v4 right now, but CLG pretty timid. FlyQuest going in, nice follow-up there with the Yone ulti. Pobelt are going to be taken very low with Jose de Oto grabbing the first kill of the fight. Wild Turtle goes over the wall, but the sleep is coming in. FlyQuest take the fight, they get one kill and they get the Rift Herald as their prize. Nicely done. Go for the engage there. Utilize the Shen ultimate to come across. CLG didn't want to commit fully to it, but they still stayed in the area, hoping that they could get a smite on that Rift Herald, still pick up some sort of an objective and maybe get out. But they pile in on top of Pobelter, they take him down, get the Rift Herald as well, and now things looking good here for FlyQuest. So CLG with the earlier members to the play, but look at that combo directly into the Yone ultimate. The Shen is there as well, the Black Shield. Broxy used on himself, couldn't actually get it out in time prior to the combo, was too slow on that, and did not get it on Pobelter before he got chained up and knocked down. So not in time. You gotta be on point with those Morgana Black Shields because you know when when you are against these champions that are it's based about the CC, right? You don't really care about the magic damage reduction. You care about your illusion not getting comboed by the Alistar or taunted up or knocked up by the Yone or the Shens. You've gotta be on point. A late black shield does almost nothing. You can see that bottom side Scuttle Crab taken again by the side of CLG. This time it was Finn. Poor Jose de Oto cannot get any single crabs this game. He lost the first two. Broxa wins the smite fight on the next one. And then the enemy top laner takes out the crab afterwards. But at least he's got that kill from the last fight. Make the sting feel a little bit less. As Wild Turtle will continue applying pressure in the top lane. Drake is still alive. Ten minutes into the game. No Drake taken yet. So even if a team goes four for O oh, here on the Drake stacking, it will still be no earlier than a 30-minute soul in this game. Pobelter and Palafox still locked in Mortal Kombat here. Palafox doing a good job mm -hmm. remaining within one wave's worth of CS of his opponent. And considering he's laning against Lucian, who is notorious for being one of the most oppressive lane matchups in the game for a lot of champions, really good stuff from him. Yep, he got first blooded. You know, there has been a lot of pressure on him, especially going up against that Ignite Lucian. But now knowing extra members could be in the area, he's having to give up all of this wave, as well as those turret plates going down. But he just wants to work towards the shield bow. And once you have shield bow, you have so much sustain, honestly, with fleet on top of that, that it becomes so hard to really do much in this matchup as a Lucian. Oh, going after Pobelter yet again, but a flash out of the way keeps him safe from that Yone ultimate. Palafox always looking for the opportunity to make plays whenever he has allies nearby. It's a good flash, but a better ultimate from Palafox as you force out that flash. That reduces the ability of Lucian to actually play aggressively here. Turtle gonna get pressured, but we'll be able to back it up because Lucian wants to play in the face of the Yone. Harass him at the tower. Pressure for turret plates. Without flash, it's really not safe to do that, especially knowing that Stand United is gonna be coming back up. You know, Diamond could be in the area. There's a lot of pretty difficult things to deal with here for a flashless Lucian. Jose de Oto and Diamond will walk out safely from this topside river. You can see that CLG had more bodies immediately available, but they couldn't just jump in on them because Johnson would be able to rotate down to the fight in a timely manner. So CLG wisely not choosing to throw their bodies into that one and potentially walk away from a bad fight. They still have a 1,000 gold lead here, 12 minutes into the game. Two minutes we still have left to get turret plate money. And the big reason that I bring that up is you can see the Eye of the Herald still in Jose's inventory less than one minute to go on where to drop that. Jose de Oto needs to get to a lane, drop that down, and just grab the money from it. Don't let it expire. Don't make it so you have to summon it out in the woods in the middle of nowhere and hope that they don't pop the eyeball because they're going to pop it. We need to see value out of this for FlyQuest if they want to keep this game as close as possible. Yeah, and maybe they could drop it and try to use that for pressure towards the dragon. 
He's got to drop it pretty much now, though. It's, it's going to expire here, so likely we'll just get dropped down mid lane. But CLG, you know, are taking the dragon, are in, our, are in a position potentially to respond to it getting dropped out. It's going to expire. He's got to press it. Okay, last okay, we second go. there. Yeah, last possible moment. He summons it up. The Drake will go over to CLG. Broxa guarantees that. Palafox resetting his position. And oh no, Shelly got distracted right at the very edge of the aggro. This is the problem with waiting so long. It is a game of inches. And Shelly stopped shy of a foot with being in range of that turret and gets no value here out of that Rift Herald. Yeah, that is rough. But really, he doesn't have anyone but himself to blame. He just waited way too long. And then you show up and you have to drop it because it's about to expire. And let me just point out the fact that Cyan has 553 bonus health from his W at 13 minutes into the game. Plus however many That's grass procs he's gotten, which is bonus health there too. Pretty much a free Giants belt on the guy so Insane. far. As Poe Belter's gonna get dove, 1v3 is not fun in League of Legends. And Johnson is the one getting away here with the kill credit. Broxton and Smoothie coming down, looking to go after these guys. Heal already gonna be used. Johnson is the target. The man's likely to die. Even through the stand, United, he will fall. CLG coming in with a nice punish and a double kill for Brox is Morgana. Nicely done. They do get the dive on Poe Belter, but as you say, the punish is there. Would have been better to get those kills onto Turtle. He's probably going to have to do a lot of the heavy lifting, killing off some of these frontliners that Tristana skills so well with gold. But Broxa, right place, right time. Doesn't hit the binding, but no problem. You can just chase him down with the ultimate, comboing up with Smoothie on that rel. That is a pretty deadly AoE combo when you think about it. The rel ulting you in, pulling you together, and then making it so you can't actually retreat from the Morgana ultimate, making it so that second part of it will land, and if that happens, you are going to take so much damage from it. So here it is one more time. That slow-mo binding that looks even slower than it really is. <laughs> but in he goes. The combo from Smoothie stunning him up. The tether does land. And once you get tethered up, it's a point-and-click binding really from there. The W is going to be on top of you. And you are burning. All righty. CLG continuing to build up them leads. Let's see what we got here. Some tweets. Broxa clearly saw my match history and was inspired enough to steal my Jungle Morgana idea, Will Sue. See, this is what I'm talking about. You got a dedicated small part of the player base that just loves playing Morgana <laughs> in non-traditional roles. And Broxa has brought that to the big stage now. Two and zero in the Jungle Morgana, even farm with a Lilia. Yeah. He is staying you on pace with a very fast farming top tier jungler. And he's 2-0, already has Leandri's completed, but FlyQuest is looking to come back into bottom lane and do the same play here again. Flash is getting followed with flashes, and Finn is no longer among us in this world. See you later, buddy. Palafox and everybody else working together to take these kills, and FlyQuest should get the tier one down here. Yeah, that will, that guy might be able to take that straight to the people's court. You know, get that on Judge Judy. See if uh, <laughs> you can get some some money out of this. See if he's stealing your pick. <laughs> Well, hopefully it doesn't come to that. Hopefully he's a CLG <laughs> fan and is just happy to see the team popping off with it here. I know that fans are really excited about the fact that this team is two and two over the time that they've had their full roster put together. The dream is still alive, but don't have too much mm -hmm. faith. Remember, we can't have too much faith. That is the, That's the, problem. the cornerstone of CLG believers. It's a, it's a tough line you've got to walk, right? You've got to have mm -hmm. some faith, but if you have too much faith, then there, it's just, you know, it's an L that's just going to come in right away. So you got to really walk that line as a CLG fan. You know, you want the Miracle Run to happen, but if you want the Miracle Run to happen, you can't believe the Miracle Run will happen, you know? Yeah, you got to be agnostic about it. The C in yeah. CLG doesn't stand for church. You can't be going to the pews every weekend praying that CLG is going to win because that's too much faith. Exactly. You just got to believe that there's some sort of force out there compelling CLG forward, maybe, but you don't know for sure because that's the only way that CLG faith gets rewarded. It's gotta be there, but not too much. And right now, they're bringing the Rift Herald here into the mid lane. Half HP on the tier one turret. Shelly is ready to go. Now this Rift Herald will find much more success than the previous one. CLG bringing everybody together, making sure they're getting value out of this. Taking down the tier one, going after the tier two here next. Gets the headbutt, the turret's still standing with a little bit of HP, but they'll be happy with what they got. CLG back away. Mm -hmm. Gonna be backing it up, and as long as this Tristana just continues to farm, continues getting stronger. One of the benefits of having, you know, Jungle Morgana or Soul Lane Morgana, these types of things, it's rarely seen is that your Black Shield becomes so powerful, right? It actually becomes very difficult to break it. 
Uh, and champions like Alistar can't actually break it with a combo because it absorbs so much damage. It's going to be pretty effective, but Turtle has to be careful here. Oh. Jose Deodo with a big flash into the back line, going after Wild Turtle, who now dies to Johnson. FlyQuest is making the plays and making the moves. It's Jose Deodo, baby, with a shutdown, going in for the flash that sets up for the sleep, that sets up for the eat, that sets up for everything FlyQuest was looking for here in the mid-game. You love to see that confidence there from FlyQuest. Jose Deodo has those stacks. He catches Turtle with his E, slowed down, burning down then goes in, hits him with the smite to slow him again. Q, flash, in, double sleep. The black shield is there for Turtle, but Johnson is already on top of him. There's no escaping that. And despite the stopwatch being available for Broxa, he was slated to go down as well. FlyQuest gets two kills. They grab the dragon. Shield bow also complete here for Palafox. He's going to be feeling pretty comfortable now in the side lane. Nice stuff from FlyQuest, keeping his game super close, 18 and a half minutes into the game. The gold, perfectly level. The dragons, perfectly level. Kills within a couple of one another, making for a very even bout between these two squads. And when we're talking about making your way up towards the playoffs, for the miracle run to still be alive, for either one of these teams to have that chance to try to fight up there, you've got to win these games against the other guys that are currently not in the conversation. Because otherwise, even if you make it up there, all you're going to do is get bopped as soon as you go into your first best of five. You've got to be looking competitive. And for both of these squads, they need to take down one of the other guys that's here scrapping with them in the trenches. Yeah, exactly. Likewise, would love to seal the fate here of CLG, move themselves one step closer to a potential playoff position. Diamond, he's going to have to run here. CLG's oh. coming. Can you run fast enough? No, you don't run faster than Illusion. Ulti with the follow-up damage. Povelt are picking up his second kill of the game. Yeah, Diamond seemed like he, he was hesitating there. You know, he wanted to threaten the dive uh, with Palafox in position. We'll see if Palafox can find it now. Okay, Palafox goes in for the fate unsealed. Povelt are taken very, very low, but Finn to the rescue. Oh, Licorice has to flash to guarantee the kill, but Palafox now being jumped on by Smoothie. A little bit more damage coming through with the Decimate landing into the ground, and Palafox will fall. Licorice is the next target. The Binding will not find him, but the Slow does. Finn still in hot pursuit. Slams down the damage. Broxa needs just a little bit more, and he gets another one. Game is still even. Six to six. Nicely done by CLG in the extended play. It's actually a three for one for them when you consider the kill on Diamond as well. But... FlyQuest did take the mid lane tier one, so they get something back for themselves. Here it is one more time. You know, Diamond was trying to be in position for the flank, and then I think he just didn't want to actually have to flash over the wall. You know, not realizing did he, you know, have to do it? Did he not have to do it? How much damage was he going to take? In that position, it would have been better if you're going to commit the flash. Just flash it over the wall, accept it, back it up. But then they go right back in. But look how fast that TP was from Finn. I think he's deserving of a lot of credit here. You know, we saw Pobelter kite it out, create some space here, then forcing Licorice to actually come through because Finn had enough peel to actually force that flash out of him. Meant the Shen didn't have the flash to retreat, and as the rest of CLG arrived, it was a couple easy kills for them to pick up. CLG ready to respond every time FlyQuest want to make a move here. Still just a couple hundred gold, their advantage over their opponents. The third Drake of the game, spawning here in under two minutes. But because of how late the first Drake was, we're still not looking at a sole win con for either side. But we are seeing Pobelter find himself in a 1v2 against Jose Deodo and Licorice. And perfectly done there with the CC, making okay. sure to wait so that Pobelter doesn't wake up and get the chance to kill Lilia before the taunt is applied. Exactly. And also, you know, doing it instantly after the bop comes through. You know, if you're a little bit slow there, one Q auto could actually kill Jose Diodo. So, you know, you are walking that fine line where you don't want to int over a kill, but you also don't want to waste that wake up damage. Uh, you don't want to do it too early. Licorice here going to have to go and retreat, but at the very least, they will get the tower. And Licorice is cut off from his team. Smoothie's above him. The rest of the team Everybody's is coming him. down. <laughs> Everybody's no coming down. That. Licorice, how are you going to get out of here, buddy? Yeah, he's got Stand United to try to get away, but there's so much hard CC. <laughs> what? Well, they, uh, they, they're they worried about what? the Baron. They're worried about the Baron, okay. and, and Broxa just kind of took the wrong path, to be honest with you. Broxa could have just stayed on the other side, and they would have been able to corral him back towards the other team. But I think they just said, ooh, what if they're on Baron right now? They have Kai'Sa. And that really feels like that's what uh, forced them to, to back it up. 
Uh -oh. Makes sense enough to me, but Pobelter's now in a spot where Diamond can tank up the turret. Yes, the kill goes over to the support, but I guess it doesn't matter too much at the end of the day, because FlyQuest now has priority and a 5v4 here on the map. Mm -hmm. Gonna be able to grab that. Let's see, does Palfox greed for the cannon? Oh, it doesn't get it. Uh, tried to go for it. I respect the attempt. Always got to go for them cannons whenever you see them around. FlyQuest now with a 1,000 gold lead. You can see the blue trinket applied to the Baron Pit just to make sure FlyQuest weren't trying something sneaky. But nine seconds until the Drake is alive. We'll see which team decides to prioritize it more heavily. I'd uh, just like to see send one member down, right? You don't need all these people down there. Just honestly send Johnson. Allow Johnson to solo this up. Move Jose Diodo up towards the Baron, so if, if anything is happening, we can have the Kaiser roam up, you know, join the fight with an ultimate potentially, and the threat of Jose Diodo stealing a Baron should be enough to dissuade you. So I think they're doing it just the way I would like it. You don't need to overcommit to an uncontested dragon. I think that's just one of those cardinal sins that you see sometimes in pro play where, you know, no one's coming to contest it, but three people are hitting the dragon and the other team's on Baron. So what's the next play here, Azale? For either one of these teams, whoever you think should be the one making the moves with such an even game state, what do you want to see to accelerate this game forward now 24 minutes in with no dragon alive for the next five minutes? I think for FlyQuest is just continue to get in the 1-3-1, one, tax the resources of your opponents, and try to look for the proactive Shen ultimates. Because Shen plus the Yone, you have the IE now, so you're at 100% crit on that Yone. You have the potential to really burst down these members over on CLG's side. So if you can get the Yone matched up, with the Lucian over on CLG's side. You have the Shen over by the Scion, you back it up, and then you go in with the Stand United, you go in with the Teleport, and you just try to set up these 2v1s. Because as long as you're doing it consistently, you are taxing the Teleport cooldown, and he just doesn't have as many globals to answer you. And that's why I think it's important to be proactive, because if you play it slow, he can answer with a TP every time. Oh no, Fate sealed indeed. A little bit more damage, he doesn't even need it. The mark from the E gets the kill. What was that you well, were saying earlier, Isaac? Something about when Yone gets ahead, Lucian can't play the game? Yeah, that was not close. Uh, <laughs> he killed him in like two hits. That's yeah. what it can look like in those side lanes. And I mean, they didn't even commit to Stand United because they knew they didn't need it. He had to kill. So I like that they didn't overcommit there because now Licorice can stay down to that bottom side, continue pressuring, and still join the fight with the Stand United. Something breaks out and they're going to do it right now. Diamond going in, Stand United right behind him. Palafox here to cut him off on the escape route. Nice kill coming out for CLG, grabbing a kill on Palafox before he's able to do much of anything, but Asleep is coming Sleep. down. Lily is coming round. More damage going out with Turtle grabbing a kill on Diamond. CLG are 2v3 here on the map. Pobelter now respawning, makes it even. Finn gets away, and honestly, that fight went a lot better for CLG than it had any business going. And I think it was because of the great turn on the Palafox. You know, he's not playing with a QSS. He is still squishy. If you can actually CC up Yone, you can kill him off. He has a tremendous amount of sustain, but the Shen United was actually used on Diamond. I think they should have saved it for Palafox and sent him in aggressively, because as he goes in, he just gets absolutely exploded, stunned up, bound up, altered by Morgana. All the CC comes out on him. Tristana is there, and he just absolutely got evaporated. So. You know, how do you use the Stand United on the Yone? Yes, Diamond is the first member in, but he is less important and has the ultimate to protect him. So I think it should have been saved and used on the Yone. Makes a lot of sense. Even if they decide to put enough firepower into Alistar to kill him through the ulti, that just means a bunch of cooldowns that can no longer exactly. be expended on more valuable players. So in the future, we'll have to keep an eye on who those Stand Uniteds land on with Palafox being a priority, or potentially Jose Deodo if he wants to go in and make some of those big plays like we've seen out of him so far. Currently seven out of 11 kill participation, does have the fully completed Zonias. So we could see more of those big, aggressive, in your face, multi-man sleep type of plays to set it up for the entirety of FlyQuest, because I think those sorts of Lilia maneuvers will be critical for their team fight success moving forward here. Yep, and Jose Deodo has the confidence to go for those Q flashes to get in the middle of the team, throw himself in there and now does have not only heal cut but the Zonia so we can have more of that playmaking. Also want to call out, I really like the Randu and Zoman. I think it's severely under purchased. At 2700 gold, it is a bargain to be honest with you. You know, you have the crit cut, you have the AoE slow. You know, this is a very effective item at this point. It's, it's pretty overstated. So uh, glad to see Licorice picking it up. And I think it's a really intelligent buy when there's double marksmen and they're both building crit. 
I saw I will dominate talking about the exact same thing on Twitter earlier this morning, comparing the items specifically to Dead Man's Plate. Mm -hmm. How in an era of Skarners and Udiers and things like that, obviously Dead Man's Plate always gets popular for the movement speed, but in terms of just tanky stat lines, Randuin's offers a ton. And against the double marksman, as you already said, it just doubles up on that value. So Licorice yep. is indeed a brick wall just moving towards these guys. Combine that with the Stand United dodging the auto attacks for a couple of seconds. It takes a coordinated effort to bring this man down. And in the meantime, Palafox will be taking down the tier two turret here in the top side, building that FlyQuest gold lead up to two and a half thousand. Exactly, and I think it works even better because he doesn't need to close the gap for the taunt himself, right? He's going to be entering the fights on the back of Alisar or Yone, so they are his dead man's play, right? You know, yeah. they are his ability to get into the fight, but they are on this Baron already. Three-man Baron, it's going to go down fast. Licorice is here in a position to flank, so is Diamond. They will look for the turn here, I do think. CLG going in. It's Smoothie starting off the fight with the ulti and the CC down into two. Jose de Odo forced into the stasis, but Wild Turtle's going to be shut down. FlyQuest still grabbing themselves the Baron. Brox is in the stasis. Jose de Odo still alive. Grabbing a kill onto Brox. And now Palafox taking that one. CLG looking to fight back, but Poe Belter has nothing he can do. It's a triple kill for Licorice. It is four dead on the enemy team. It is Baron over to FlyQuest. That was a massive victory here in this mid game. Scion gets over the wall. There's no CC to interrupt him. He will not die here. So Finn is the last man standing for CLG. Nice little escape there for Finn, but it is not enough. And if we get a replay on this, you know, I really want to watch the Black Shield. Because as Broxa goes in, he's just focused on the steal. So he Black Shields himself and goes forward. But look at Turtle. That means he's left out to dry. Everyone piling on top of him. No one peeling for him. You know, Smoothie went forward with a good engage. Brox is trying to follow up on that. But when you all move forward and you leave none of your peeling, none of your protection for the Tristana, there was nothing he could do there. He's flanked by Alistar, no Black Shield, Yone Ultimate over top. You know, the Stand United is going to come through. Shen is arriving as well. He just got locked up and burst out. So in that position, even if you steal the Baron, your Tristana is instantly dead, so you're never going to win that 5v5. And that's where you really have to make those tough choices. You know, do you prioritize the fight or do you prioritize the steal? I think in that case, CLG would have been better served playing for the fight instead of just trying to Rambo in straight to the Baron. Just walk it in, attack the people that are on the flank, and try to punish FlyQuest after they take the Baron. And one of the other big issues, right, is Pobelter's across the map. He had to hoof mm -hmm. it all the way to that team fight. Turtle's dead five seconds before Pobelter even shows up because Pobelter is playing in a position that you would expect from a teleport mid laner, but he's got Ignite. So as soon as FlyQuest challenges their opponents and says, you must answer, all of a sudden they must answer as 4v5, and things are incredibly difficult in a situation like that. Finn versus Licorice here in the top lane. Finn grabs the tier two turret, but down in the bottom lane, FlyQuest is doing the same, pushing up towards the tier three here. Yes, Alistar's stuck on the spooky dirt for a moment, but that doesn't really matter too much. They will continue applying the pressure, and they're going after the remaining tier two here in this mid lane, seeing if they can find that. Nothing to even ask about it. Yes, it'll be done. Now, do they want to pressure onto the tier threes themselves, or do they just go for the free Baron, or free Dragon, excuse me? Looks like Palafox is opting for the dream. Yeah, and Palafox is already level 18. That is pretty insane. He is very, very strong at this point in the game. Finn, the closest level to him. But when you're looking over at the two marksmen who are three levels down, at Brox who's four levels down, it's really going to take an E ult and maybe a Q auto, and you probably are dead from full, unless you have you know a significant amount of shielding or healing coming through from the locket or something. It's not going to take much for him to burst down one of these members. He's just at such a dominant point in the game. Licorice now, also with the fully completed Thorn Mail. You can apply that 60% Grievous Wounds if you land that Taunt, which makes it even more difficult uh, for any of these Marksmen to actually sustain through it, right? And they have to get towards their Last Whispers. They have their three core items for damage, but you need Armor Pen, which pushes back your lifesteal even further, which makes it more difficult to actually deal with the incoming damage from the Thorn Mail. CLG will manage to secure their own blue buff there. You could see that FlyQuest wanted to contest it, but Broxa had the smite to take it away. Jose de Odo, two levels up over his counterpart there in the jungle. You already talked about the level difference in mid as well. Those are the two biggest contrasts 
here in terms of performance of EXP between the players. FlyQuest also now on Soul Point. Three and a half minutes from now, they can grab themselves an Infernal Soul. Yes, it is very late. Yes, it'll be around 36 minutes into the game, but that's still an Infernal Soul. It'll still be more in their back pocket, and it's still something CLG has to answer. Broxa gets engaged on Diamond, trampling around into the back line. Johnson finds his entrance, but now is he in the wrong spot? Johnson takes out Wild Turtle, but it's a one-for-one -one trade here in the AD carries. Finn goes on a killing spree. Jose Diodo stuck four in the middle of four. Sleep. Three man sleep coming down. Palafox wants to make his entrance, find a little bit more damage here. Finn's doing everything he can to fight, but one Scion a team does not make. Jose Diodo prances away. Finn falls over. Licorice grabs the double kill. Brox is still left alive, but he's the only man that can say that. Finn's dead body will try to clear out the waves. He knocks over a couple of them. Oh, man, FlyQuest, they get a four for two, and they're pushing down the bottom lane. Yeah, Broxa, you got to try to clear that wave. Licorice taunted over the wall, so he can't taunt you. you got to walk up and W that wave. I don't think you should be actually spending your W trying to poke the Shen, who you can't really kill. You just need to focus on denying the minions to slow down this push here. But instead, Wild he's Turtle and poke it away. are just about up. So FlyQuest will not be able to secure an inhibitor for themselves. That is at least something that CLG can breathe a little lighter on, knowing that they didn't lose all that extra map mm -hmm. pressure just to having super minions spawning. But the base is now wide open. And let's take another look at how it happened with Diamonds Engage. And this was really all about Jose Diodo. You know, we did see a lot of peeling for Turtle this time. They recognized their error in the previous fight. They kill off the Kai'Sa, and it's looking like, hey, they're gonna win this fight. But over the wall he goes, he got a three-man Q, and then actually W'd on Broxa, so I thought it was that four-man sleep. Excuse me, it was just the three as you had called in the play. But, you know, once you land that, there's so much damage coming through, and the chance of Palafox getting burst down was completely eliminated. He had so much sustain that once that lands, you are never gonna be able to kill off the Yone and FlyQuest, a beautiful team fight win. So much credit deserved by Jose Diodo. It feels like every major conflict they've had this whole game, he has found the perfect multi-man sleep that secures the team fight win. It's so important how much he's doing here in these team fights. FlyQuest looking to make another play here in the mid lane now. 90 seconds until the Drake is alive, but only one until Baron's up and ready to go again. Another bowling ball thrown out, another gutter ball. As CLG will step away from that one. You can see Licorice is in the bottom lane. Has no teleport, but does have Stand United. Nobody's there to interrupt him, so he can join the fight just fine. FlyQuest will clear out some of the vision around the Baron pit. Remember, it's Yone and Kai'Sa. These two together do Baron so fast, you don't even need Jose de Oto there. He will rotate over now. Diamond gets bound up. Baron is continuously taken low, down to 1,000 HP, secured by Jose. Palafox resets his position to join up here with the rest of the team. Diamond's gonna tank up for everybody, buy a little bit more time. Palafox jumping in there, going after Wild Turtle. Johnson into the back with a killer instinct. Finn is still alive, but it don't matter. Licorice is godlike. Everybody except for Broxa is dead once more. How many times this game am I gonna have to say that sentence? FlyQuest on a victory march down mid lane. Yeah, there's no way that we could see CLG defend this one. The minions are already there in the bot lane. They have the Baron buff. It's a five versus one. What a team fight there from FlyQuest. Looked like a multi-man Q flash there, and Jose Diodo wants that final kill. He's gonna try to find it onto Broxa, but they are pushing in Nexus in their sights. Oh, Johnson wants to pad the stats a little bit more even. Times the W with the auto attack, and there it goes. Even putting up the white flag Evo for the Bud Light Ace and FlyQuest. 36 minutes into this game. Takes down CLG. Nicely done by FlyQuest, keeping their playoff dreams alive. With that, CLG should be fully eliminated from contention. This was a strong showing here from FlyQuest. No confidence with their engages, confidence to actually go with the Yone pick. That was going to be tough to actually lane in this game. I think the draft yeah. was smart. I think that, you know, not getting too bogged down in what would be a good 1v1 matchup against this blind Lucian and looking to what would be effective against it later on. You know, what would work best to win this game, not just win the lane. I think Palafox found the pick. I think it paired up incredibly well with Shen, which was a great answer to the double marksman. And FlyQuest had that killer edge here, you know, with Jose Diodo and Yone and Diamond on the Alistar constantly throwing themselves into these fights and starting them off on the right foot to create space for their marksman. Some beautiful teamwork from FlyQuest to walk away with a win in this one. And that is our final game of the day. So that does it for myself and Azale, but we're going to a break.